Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome into this edition of Dolphins Today, and I'm fired up to be with you because it is our first major unpacking of a very exciting topic. That is the Miami Dolphins 2024 big board as it relates to the draft. And that's right, your one-stop shop for all Miami Dolphins draft talk, coverage, rumors, this, that, and the other is right here on Dolphins Today. So roll up your sleeves and remember, it's not set in stone. We're going to continue to evolve, but here's what we have in store so far for the Dolphins 2024 draft picks. A first round pick, number 21 overall, and then in the second round, 23rd selection, which is 55th overall, because remember, the losers of the wild card round rotate those picks. No pick in number three. We won't really revisit why, but you get the idea. Round four, nah, no pick there. That was the trade for Bradley Chubb in over to Denver. Then round five, back to that 23rd selection, which is the 156th pick overall. And in round six, there's both the 8th, 22nd, and the 22nd pick, remember that was from a trade, and then one pick in the 7th round, or two picks, I beg your pardon, with the 21st, that's 238 overall, and six picks in total. So, with that said, it's important to remember that all of your draft coverage can be found right here on Dolphins Today, and that is why you subscribe. Now listen, a lot of channels will stop doing content uh, when the season ends. Not us. And my friends, like I mentioned earlier, had some meetings with the bosses, and they said, listen up, Ritma, you know, you know you're doing Dolphins content each and every day, but we might have to make the channel private, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, because I don't want you to miss a single thing that we talk about, because like I said, that draft conversation can be a roller coaster, and we could be trading picks, we can be stockpiling picks, but either way, you want to make sure you're along for the ride. So subscribe to the channel and help us get to our next goal of 56 thousand subscribers here on Dolphins today. Now, a very exciting time is when Mel Kuyper and some of the experts out there covering the 2024 NFL Draft put together their big board. What this really means is it's an evaluation of the talent that's out there. It's not going to say, you know, here's what the order is going to be and how teams will pick, but it's more or less putting out the best prospects. So, the latest Mel Kuyper big board at the 21st overall player is Tavondre Sweat, the defensive tackle out of Texas. Now, this is very, very interesting because when you think of potential needs for the Miami Dolphins, defensive tackle could be on that list. So let's get to know Tavondre Sweat out of the University of Texas. Six foot four, 362 pounds from Huntsville, Texas. And in 2023, had the two sacks, which is interesting to point out because before 2023, Sweat was really known as a run stopper at the defensive tackle position. And obviously, you could make the claim that that's the most important skill to have as a defensive tackle. But Mel Kuyper, in his latest big board evaluation, had some really interesting tidbits that really paint Sweat as more than just a run-plugging defensive tackle. You see there at the very top, in 2023, showed a lot of improvement in the pass-rushing component of his game, and in addition to being a run-plugger, he's part of the game is his ability to rush, rush the passers, and as Mel Kuyper put it, he's a disruptive guy that can, force, that can be a force in the run and pass situations. He could help an NFL defense in any situation. So when you hear those glowing remarks about Devondre Sweat, and a little bit more, he did show some improvement and can be more than just a run plugger. Pass rushing part of his game, and again, is a guy that shows a little bit of versatil versatility. It gets a little bit exciting when you think how he could fit in a Miami Dolphins uniform, especially with the pending situation of Christian Wilkins. Now, we touched on this earlier. If you missed that video, definitely go check it out. But Christian Wil Wilkins had a breakout season for the Miami Dolphins. If you watch Hard Knocks, it doesn't, uh, it's no secret that he's certainly a leader of this Miami Dolphins team, but he also could be a guy that demands a huge contract based on his performance, and that's a testament to the productivity of Christian Wilkins this season. Career high, nine sacks, you see the 10 tackles for loss, and it might be a guy that demands elite defensive tackle type money. So looking at what the market 
has bared the last couple of years. You look at a guy like Javon Hargrave, who's even older than Christian Wilkins. He got four years, $81 million from San Francisco. And again, he's a little bit older than Christian Wilkins, who's 28 years old. Quinn and Williams, four-year, $96 million, a little bit younger than Christian Wilkins for the New York Jets. So maybe Wilkins fits somewhere in between there. Again, we're just speculating here. But it's worth noting with the Dolphins in what many would call cap space hell, maybe Christian Wilkins is not the guy you deal out to a huge contract to, and instead you try to replace him with a little bit more friendly option for the team in the books by drafting a talented defensive tackle like Tavondre Sweat. So, a lot to consider, and there's certainly no wrong answer, but I do want to hear from you. Do you like the idea of drafting a defensive tackle in the first round? It's real simple. Type Y for yes or N for no. And again, this would be, in a lot of senses, you'd have to imagine it'd be to replace Christian Wilkins because of the amount of money that he's due. But again, no wrong answer. Let me know in the comments. Coming up, we've got more first-round draft prospects to evaluate for the Miami Dolphins pick at 21. But first, I want to tell you about today's presenting sponsor, Fired Up, to tell you all about America's number one meal delivery service, Factor. And what do we know? Of course, we're into the new year in 2024, and you're probably making wise decisions and you're following through on your resolution. But let me just make it a little bit easier for you with the convenience of Factor. These are fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals that are delicious, and they're delivered straight to your door. I'm telling you, it's a win, win, win all the way around. You say goodbye to annoying tasks like grocery shopping, doing the dishes meal prepping. You don't have to buy 600 you know, containers to put your meals in. No, forget about that. Factor meals are delivered straight to your door. They only take two minutes to heat up. And most importantly, they are delicious and nutritious. And there's a ton of variety. 35 meals to choose from per week. And that include options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and so much more. And you can't forget about the 55 weekly add-ons. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart those resolutions. Take it from me, the smoothie should not be slept on. They are delicious, especially if you're on the go. Maybe you walk to work. Grab a smoothie on the go. It's one of my favorite and kind of underrated parts about Factor. Of course, the meals are delicious as well. You guys know I love the Chipotle pork chop. So head to factormeals.com slash finschat50 and use code finschat50 to get 50% off. I'm not even kidding you. We're giving you 50% off because we love you and we care about you. That's code finschat50 at factormeals.com slash finschat50 to get 50% off. And don't forget, we put that link right in the description of today's video as well as the comments. So no excuse. You'll thank me later. Factormeals.com slash finschat50 for 50% off. All right, I want to give you a couple other first-round ideas I have for the Miami Dolphins, and I do believe we're in the idea-generating uh, process as far as the timeline goes because, obviously, there's still NFL playoff football going on. The combine hasn't happened yet. We'll continue to evolve these ideas, but the offensive line certainly could use some depth. When you think about the musical chairs that were going on just to find healthy bodies throughout this season – that really could be the only answer you need to say. Why are we looking at offensive linemen? Because we need them. Jackson Powers Johnson, a guy who plays for Oregon, one of the more athletic prospects in this draft. And you see it on the screen there, arguably the best interior blocker for this year's draft class. And you think about where he could fit in with the Miami Dolphins, big question mark at center with Connor Williams tearing his ACL. You got Rob Hunt as a pending free agent. There's a lot of question marks on the Miami Dolphins offensive line. Throw in Kendall Lamb. The list goes on. So shoring up the offensive line with a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson makes a lot of sense to me, especially when you consider that Jackson Powers Johnson's coming from a big-name program like Oregon, played for Dan Lanning and the Ducks, and they had a heck of a season, a great offense. He was protecting Bo Nix, who was one of the most prolific passers all season long, and you could really make the case that Jackson Powers Johnson makes a lot of sense if he's around at 21. Now, some other potential picks to keep your eye on. Staying on the offensive line, Amarius Mims out of Georgia. Not a ton of experience, actually only eight starts in a Georgia Bulldog uniform, 
But with his physical nature and the size and stature at the tackle position, he's somebody to keep an eye on if he were to fall to 21. And we talked about one defensive lineman from Texas, but Byron Murphy the second, another guy to keep your eye on, on the defensive line if that's the route you want to go in the first round. And then in the middle there, Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Again, building on that idea that potentially the offensive line or defensive line really needs to be boosted with some depth through the draft. So I've given you my thoughts. Let me know yours. There's no wrong answer here. Really curious what you guys have to say. What position should the Dolphins draft in the first round? Let me know in the comments. Now, I'm going to get a little bit crazy and wild, and don't everybody come at me on the keyboard. Listen, we're just in the idea generation phase of all this. So I had a little time today, so we got a little bit wild, and I was just trying to spitball a little bit. At times, this Miami Dolphins offense in 2023 was prolific, and other times, a little bit stagnant. So I put together a little curveball idea, thinking outside the box here, I love Brock Bowers as the best tight end prospect out of the University of Georgia. And no disrespect to Durham Smythe, I think this would be a complimentary move. And listen, I know what the comments are going to say. We need offensive linemen. We need defensive linemen. This is a luxury pick. And I agree with all that. However, if you want to get bold and trade up for a guy like Brock Bowers, who at times could provide what this Miami Dolphins offense was missing, that missing Peace. Durham Smythe, again, no disrespect, but the tight end out in Notre Dame was the third leading receiver for this Dolphins team, but had less than 400 yards receiving when you compare that to what Jalen Waddell had with over 1,000 and, of course, with Tyreek Hill, well over 1,000 leading the NFL in receiving yards. And if you have an incredibly athletic tight end like Brock Bowers, it adds such another element to any offense given the offensive creativity that both Mike McDaniel and Frank Smith for now are able to utilize a guy like Brock Bowers, I could see him just being a superstar. And I do think in today's NFL, the tight end's only going to become more and more increasingly important to any prolific offense. So you look at this tight end depth chart right now, Durham Smythe, as I mentioned, was the team's third leaving receiver, but there was such a huge jump from one and two with both Waddle and Hill being over 1,000 yards, down to Durham Smythe, who was less than 400 yards receiving. Julian Hill, totally a blocking tight end. No disrespect to him. And Tyler Kraft was a healthy scratch all down the stretch. So, again, this is kind of wild, and you don't have to love it, but he's rated the eighth best prospect. Several mock drafts have him going to number five, at number five to the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, we know the Chargers looking for a head coach. They've got all kinds of issues over there in Los Angeles. Maybe Jim Harbaugh is going to be the next coach of the Chargers. Who really knows? So with that said, what if we get wild and offer the Chargers quite the trade in exchange for that fifth overall pick? Miami gets the fifth overall pick. And again, I admit you're mortgaging a lot. You're mortgaging the future. But trade that 21st overall pick as well as the 55th overall pick, which would be the Dolphins' second-round pick. And then, oh, yeah, in 2025, give them the second-round pick. So I get it. It's a lot. But imagine this offense with Brock Bowers, a playmaking tight end, an elite tight end with the athleticism, split him out in the slot. Look how much he could do. I could see him setting records for tight ends at that position in Mike McDaniel's offense. So let me know what you think of the trade idea to move up to number five, which is where I think Brock Bowers is right now about to go in that top five area. Grade my trade proposal, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know down in the comments. And hey, if I lost you, be honest. But if you love it, I'll take some credit as well. Otherwise, you're probably going to say, Ritma, you're crazy. They'll never do it. And I'm not saying they'll do it. But again, we're in the idea formulation time period of this big board draft talk. But anyways, I always love talking about the Miami Dolphins and what they could potentially do around the 2024 NFL Draft. All of the rumors, all of the breaking news, every single angle of the Aqua and Orange, we've got you covered, and that is why you subscribe. And again, the bosses here at Chat Sports said we need to build this channel. I know the Dolphins fans are the realest of the reals, so if you like what you saw today, we do this every single day. Dolphins content on the daily, plus coverage of breaking news. And oh yeah, our live shows are still going during the offseason, 
So make sure you subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything, and I'll do you one better. If you subscribe and you don't love the channel, unsubscribe. Maybe it'll break my heart, but you know what? You owe it to yourself for the best Dolphins content on the internet. That's what we strive to bring you here at Dolphins today. I want to thank Jack Lauderay and the ones and twos helping make today's show possible. And until next time, we will see you. Have Dolphins today.